Welcome along to the latest episode of The Laura and Becky Show. So most of you know the story by now, but for those of you who don't, let me tell you. We were on the radio together. We got the sack. So what did we do? We took off to Mallorca, had a few drunken days out there and thought, you know what? We are going to start a podcast and here we are. Here we are. We are sponsored by Prince Family Law Solicitors, Red Brick Estate Agents. We're in collaboration with East Midlands Airport. And today we're out and about again. I feel like we're out and about a lot at the moment. I feel like this week in particular, We've been out and about nearly every day of the pod. I'm yeah. exhausted. <laughs> Are you? God, it's Friday. I'm shattered. Also, last um, episode of season 12 yes. today as well. This season, we say this Explain every season, by. it's gone very quick this season. There are eyes on us at the moment, which I'm, I'm more than, there's lots of pairs of eyes staring at us. I know, we're not it's quite intimidating. This. We're in a boardroom. I know. But there is quality street and water. <laughs> <laughs> we're, okay. not, we're not used to having so many eyes on us, though, are we? Obviously, normally we're in the studio by ourselves, but today... We've been let loose. Yeah, so it is the last episode of season 12, and we thought we'd end it at our sponsors. So we are at the Chesterfield offices. Whoop, whoop, to Chesterfield. There we go. (laughs) Uh, Prince Family Law Solicitors. I just want to say, first of all, we've been to the wrong office. Well, this was slightly (laughs) awkward, wasn't it? I mean, we're not going to say whose office it was, but we basically parked up. We got our little suitcase with all of our equipment in, and uh, we walked down to this office. We were, like, knocking on the door, ringing the bell, then a guy, because there's like different offices in this building. Then a guy came along and we were like, can you just let us in? Because we're here, we're here for <laughs> these guys. So he wouldn't let us in, first <laughs> of all. I'm not quite sure why. Maybe we looked slightly dodgy. Um, but thank goodness he didn't, because we would have gone upstairs if he'd <laughs> let know. us in and set up in the, the wrong, wrong law place. firm. Yeah. How embarrassing. Anyway, we're here now. <laughs> Nat, thank you very much for coming to find us. We are, in, we are in the right place, aren't yeah. we? <laughs> <laughs> just to double check. We definitely are. We definitely are. Um, so. So um, we've got one, two, three, four, five. Are you all solicitors? <laughs> I feel a bit intimidated. Look, they're all staring at us. Are you all solicitors slash lawyers slash trainees? You can grab the mic if you want. They all look terrified of the mic. Grab the mic. There we go. Grabbing the mic. Here yes. We are. Solicitors, trainees. Nice mixed bag. Right. Okay. Well, we had to ask um, Lisa. We had Lisa in this week, wasn't it? Last week. This week. Last week. This week. A few days ago. (laughs) (laughs) And we were chatting to her and we asked her the question, didn't we? What is the difference between a lawyer and a solicitor? Because we had no clue. And I think a lot of people are the same. You just, you don't know what the difference is. We were a bit scared to ask. We thought it was a stupid question. But she did, she did say it wasn't a stupid question. Do you think that's right? They're like, it's a stupid (laughs) question. (laughs) Everyone's gone very quiet. Yeah. Right, you pick up that Yeah, you keep that mic. She's She's popped it down. Put put it down. Here we go. I feel like we should start with you because you're kind of like at the head of the table. Head of the table. On the top top table. Right, so what what's your name? What's your name and where'd you come from? (laughs) (laughs) I'm Sarah Woodward, director here with uh, David Prince and Lisa O'Connor. I uh, started the firm with David initially. It's a, a big national law firm based in Sheffield, and we took the plunge 18 years ago to uh, leave there and set up here, which was a huge risk. Um, It's really paid off. We've really built up the firm together and with everyone else. Lisa then joined us, and then we've expanded the team, and uh, we're now over two sides. So it's been a great achievement. Well worth the risk. Just Sorry, you are Sarah. We've we've heard about Sarah, haven't we? It's all coming together now yeah yes. really? your name's been banded about do you like a pale rose sarah <laughs> do, you, do you like a pale rose i do <gasps> yeah i and think i have mm. to say my absolute favorite is a nice glass of whispering angel <gasps> um, what kind of yeah. got you into um law and initially was in working in commercial in more of an administrative role really initially um and thought Actually, I think I'd like to move up the ranks a bit. I'd like to do something different. So commercial law wasn't for me because I'm very much a people type person. So thought, well, what about family law? So I decided to do in-house training via the chartered legal exec route and uh, then moved from commercial into uh, family law. So day to day then, yeah, and no two days the same. Is it just one of those jobs where you go s- turn up in the morning and think, what's going to come at me today? 
Definitely. Yeah, is that what you and like? It, it, and the other thing is, you always think you've heard it all. You think, oh. actually, <laughs> that's some story. That takes some beating. But believe you me, someone always beats it. We, we do like a good law program like Ali McBeal um what's that one that I the split which was on oh, yeah. BBC yeah. that was like a family law firm wasn't it um is it like that because is it this is what people like us imagine it to be like that you're all walking around in your power suits with your red lippy on you know just pull 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 left right and center <laughs> is that what it's like it's nothing like that I have to say the uh, the, the key difference is we don't all work on one case which you tend to find in such as Ali McBeal, they were all working on the one case. Uh, so yeah, we're all very busy doing our own individual uh, cases. Um, but uh, yeah, there, there's some fun elements to it as well, but it's not quite the, uh, the, the, the glamour of the legal dramas. Oh, that, uh, damn. We, we won't become lawyers then, Law. <laughs> yeah. yeah, we'll leave it to you guys. <laughs> <laughs> right, should we meet someone else from the table who wants to yes. go next? Here, oh, here we go. Hello. What's your name? <laughs> I'm Rachel Barlow. Ra Rachel. And what do you do here, Rachel? So I'm a Chartered Legal Executive, same as Sarah. Yeah. I'm Sarah for how many years? Do we want to admit that? Probably 25. 1990s, I would wow. say. Wow. Oh, okay. So wow. I've been here about a year. Yeah. Um, but as I said, known Sarah for a long time on a professional level. We've had, we've butted heads a lot on cases, haven't we? Have you? Over the years. <gasps> Um, and, and do you always keep it in the, the courtroom <laughs> or do you take it home? <laughs> <laughs> You've got to keep it in the courtroom, yeah. haven't you? <laughs> yeah. Wow. So yeah, we've known each other for a very long time. Okay. And we came here about a year ago. How, how long have sorry, how long have you been? So I've been doing my job for about twenty six years, twenty five, wow. twenty six years. Is there one case that sticks out? You don't have to say what it is, but is there one where you're like Phew. Yes. Yeah, right. there are quite a few cases where I've, I've that stick in my mind definitely yeah quite a few cases in the early days that I would say disturb you and cause you to wake up in the middle of the night mm -hmm. probably and and they're ones that I remember but I wish I'd counted the amount of cases that I've done over the years I don't know about you Sarah but it's thousands isn't it oh, yeah. yeah see I was going to ask that because I guess with the sort of things you're dealing with it's not always the kind of thing that you can switch off and just go oh right 5 30 off to eat my pork chops tonight it's i guess it is still on your mind isn't it like you say it wakes you up in the night and you're thinking about it so how do you switch off well it, you don't always switch off and because it's such a personal job that you do i think the clients that you come into contact with and people's circumstances uh, there's a lot of empathy that you've got there as well mm. isn't there yeah, so of course. you know we're all human beings and i think for a lot of clients they just like the experience that they can offload get things off the chest you might not always give them predominantly legal advice it might be that you have a chat with them about other issues as well so sometimes you're a bit of a therapist mm, yeah um, but you know just knowing that you're getting clients through that difficult period is yeah rewarding yeah so yeah we never have the we never have the same thing every day yeah we were talking to lisa about that weren't we, we were talking about initially when someone first comes to speak to you they're probably upset confused scared worried all the things and I guess initially what they want to do is just chat to you on like a a, a, a human level yeah. and to see if you know what happens because yeah. like you said you are almost like the first part a bit of a therapist mm. yeah you know absolutely. you calm people down hopefully help people kind mm. of think okay this isn't going to be bad if you're representing them and often just spending that first hour with them yeah you, you can you can visibly see that a weight's off the chest when they're walking out the door. Yeah. The two girls that we had in um, on the pod, so we had two lovely ladies, they're listeners to the podcast, and they'd message in saying they wanted to come on and talk about their divorces. So it was lovely Charlotte and lovely Sammy, both great stories. If you haven't listened to it, you need to listen to it because it's so, so good. Um, and they were saying the same thing, that it's so important to get someone who you really trust and you know is fighting your corner as well. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, definitely. They also explained that obviously they were, their divorces were quite a while ago. I think like 10 years plus. Yeah. But when they look back at their divorce, it's a complete blur. They like, they can't quite remember like they, they know it was bad, but they can't quite remember what happened. But the point is you do get through it, don't you? You, you do get through it. And I say to a lot of clients, it's like a grieving process. Mm. So I think in some respects, you're grieving for someone who's still there. So I think sometimes it's even harder to deal with. 
but they definitely get through it. And I see people coming through the other side. You know, I've got people who, uh, we, uh, we've got such a rapport that we still meet for coffee, even though the divorce has finished five, six, seven That's years nice. ago. That's nice. And it is nice because I can see what a good place they're in now. Yeah, I think it probably is. It's like one of the biggest things a person will ever deal with, isn't it, in their life. But like you say, the time you think you're never going to get through, you think, oh, I'm never going to be the same person again. My life's not going to look the same. But you you do come through it. You do, you do. Should we move on to someone else? Yes. Who's it going to go to? One of the to? lads. Here we go. You've been staying very quiet over there. <laughs> what's, what's your name? I, I'm Robert Gallon. Uh, I'm a solicitor here. I have been here for the last two years. It's actually my work anniversary this week. Oh, Yay! Yeah. Perhaps we should get that pink Prosecco yeah. out. <laughs> <laughs> Any excuse? Um, so, yeah, I, I previously worked in Scotland for, um, I think I was in Scotland for six years post-qualification before doing the transfer course to come down work in England. Uh, so I've been here now for two years. He's got a lovely voice. <laughs> <laughs> I said he's got a lovely voice. Yeah, yeah. Like How are you it. finding it down um, this neck of the woods yeah. then? How are you finding che- Do you live in Chesterfield around I, here? I live in Derbyshire, so just uh, south of Chesterfield. Like it? <laughs> he's not divulging exactly <laughs> where he lives. <laughs> it, there's no real difference to, to Scotland. Just the accents are slightly different. <laughs> Interesting. Really? Okay. Yeah, Interesting. We'll, we'll take that. Yeah. Um, so... <laughs> How did you end up doing the job you were doing? Was it something you always wanted to do? Um, I think I've always been quite argumentative. <laughs> I've always been quite opinionated. Um, I've always wanted to do something uh, law related. Actually, both my parents are lawyers. Um, oh. So I always wanted to go into law. I ended up in family law essentially just because that's what the, the majority of my caseload was um, when I was practicing. Um, initially, I was with general practice firms, so it, it was a range of different uh, cases, some criminal law, some civil law, some family law, uh, and family law was the, the area of law which I enjoyed most. I felt it was most rewarding, and it was the, the majority of my caseload, um, so it made sense to me when I moved down to England to, to try and work in a family law firm. When you meet your family, like Christmas time, have you got any siblings? Are they lawyers? Are I've got one brother who couldn't be any further from the <laughs> <laughs> oh, <laughs> okay, right. so what, oh, God. So what does he do <laughs> out of interest? He's not a burglar, <laughs> is he? <laughs> <laughs> a thief. He's currently in Germany teaching English. Well, okay, right. So when you'll meet up, does he go, can you stop talking about court, please? Um, he did that, I think, for pretty much his entire secondary school <laughs> <laughs> um, before he then went to university to study law. Um, he went to study law as well? He did a law degree before he then No studied. way. No way. <laughs> love it. And do you love your job? Is it, uh, If you weren't a lawyer, what else would you be? What would be the second thing? So interesting, this. I, that I don't really know how to answer because yeah. I think it's one of these things which I don't think I could change career particularly easily now. Yeah. Um, but if I had my life over again, um, I perhaps would have made different choices at an earlier age. Okay. But Interesting. I don't know what route I would have ended up in. Right. Okay. Well, thank you. Should we should we pass the mic on? <laughs> so this is Nat. So we know Nat because Nat came. He came to find us. us. Yeah, when we couldn't, couldn't find, find the offices, building. he was like, "I'm in a blue striped shirt, girls." Yeah. And then I, and then I, and I called you Matt, and you were like, "It's Nat." I was like, "This is a great start to the day." <laughs> so, what do you do here? Uh, I'm a trainee solicitor here. Um, actually, I did my law degree in Leeds, uh, and I actually came home in COVID, happily. Uh, dreaded, dreaded COVID that we don't mention. Um, okay. And I managed to land a, landed on my feet actually, and got a job here working as a paralegal. And then they've been really nice and given me a training contract <laughs> so generously. What's a paralegal? Yeah, I know. We, we, do you know so we have uh, been told this, <laughs> yeah. but I can't it's remember. It's essentially doing clerical work and stuff like that, as, as, as similar to a sec- secretary. Okay. Right. Could we be paralegals? <laughs> uh, no, I can answer that for <laughs> you. Probably not. No. <laughs> <laughs> we can't even okay. find a building, Becky. Yeah. <laughs> Or get his name right. Um, (laughs) So again, same kind of questions, really. Was it what you always wanted to do? I don't. I don't know. I've I've always been good at English, and I know I wanted to go to university, but um, I just knew I needed to go to university to do a to do a law degree or to do a degree that was going to end up in a job. I should say. Um, 
So, yeah, I just picked law because it kind of undone my feet at the end of it. Okay. So, probably another really stupid question. <laughs> I'm so sorry. For Keep on coming. But I think this is what people want to know. Mm. So, um, <coughs> have you been in court and kind of represented someone yet? I've been in court a number of times. Uh, I haven't represented someone on my own yet, no. Right. But so, is that so the next step? Yeah. yeah. As, um, as a trainee, I'll typically sit behind people. Okay. Do a lot of drafting the documents and background work, but not actually going to court. When does that court. happen though? The next when I qualify, bit. Yeah, right. Yeah. Got it. So when you first do that, do you think you'll be like, come on then, or you'll be a bit like, ner- like I think how a mixture of feel? both. I think nervous and excitement. I mean, I, it's it's stupid to say I've been doing this job three and a half years now and I've been going to court the whole time. So I feel like I've Yes. Do enough to know what I'm doing, but I just think nerves are always going to get you no matter what you do. Nerves doing, are so. good for you though, I guess. Yeah, oh, adrenaline. Yeah, yeah. Is it a bit like um and you guys can probably answer this as well like going into the boxing ring <laughs> when you're going into court. You sort of like whoo, 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 right here we go. You have to psych yeah. yourself up a little bit. Yeah. 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 Let's get the mic. Yeah, on. we Let's can't hear you unless the mic's there guys. There we go. <laughs> yeah, you can. <laughs> if you put the mic right up to your mouth. So, so okay, so the f- do you remember the first time? The very first time I was in court, I can remember, yeah. You can. It was an awful experience. Why? <laughs> in fact, just quickly before that, how did you psych yourself up, though, before going in? It was more just trying to prepare for it. So it was yeah. trying to read the documents, trying to make sure that you understood what was going to be said, what questions you were likely to be asked um, in court. And then, of course, you get to court and you get asked completely different questions, which you're not actually prepared for. Because when I first qualified and was in court, I first appeared in front of sheriffs who like to... Sheriffs? Hang on. Scottish, <laughs> Scottish judge. Oh, I was okay. going to say, are we in America? Yeah! He's there with his sheriff's badge on, <laughs> on a horse and a cowboy hat. <laughs> <laughs> right, okay. But, but they knew who was newly qualified and they liked to try and test you. Um, I bet. So it was a bit of a baptism by fire, um, first appearance in court. But Can you uh, go into any more detail than <laughs> that? <laughs> um, basically in front of everyone you would get told that that wasn't the way to do it oh and that God. they wanted you to present it in a certain way. So right. tear you apart a little bit to make you, I guess to put you on edge a bit, right? I think it was supposed to be constructive, um, but it was... Yes, it, it just made you realise how much you had to learn and how much you still had to put in the effort and yeah. new things before you actually got to court. I oh. guess as well, though, that the, uh, each time... <laughs> he's, get, he's giving it to Nat. Nat, <laughs> you're back on. Oh, sh- Should we move? Well, sh- has anyone else got a good first court story? Because this is fascinating, like the first time you went into court. <laughs> <laughs> it's been about many years. Yeah. No? Anyone else? No? <laughs> OK. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We haven't heard from you yet. Uh, okay. What's your name? My name's Clea. That's a nice name, by the way, isn't it? Thank you. Clea it's knows a lot about uh, Cleantha. Oh. Are you going to say Cleopatra? No, Cleantha. No. <laughs> Cleantha. Yeah. I've no. never heard that name before. No, that is a lovely name. And uh, Clea knows a lot about Quality <laughs> Street. We <laughs> 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 found out already. <laughs> so you were saying you're in court this week, next so week? I've been in court for the first time on Tuesday. Um, obviously, I'm not representing anyone because I'm a trainee. I've literally started working here on the 1st of September, so <laughs> I'm not qualified a or anything newbie. yet. newbie. Um, but yeah, it was a surreal experience, to be honest, because um, it was a child case. So it's a very, very different feeling to then go to an FDR, so a financial, the next day. So it was uh, very, it was really surreal, wasn't it? Like, it is to, at first. Did you love it, though? You're like, yep, this is where I'm meant to be. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I literally, oh. I think I say to you most weeks, like, even though it's so busy and it can be stressful, I'm every week I'm like, I absolutely love it. Yeah. Like, that's I look forward to coming to work and, like, doing the job, so. That's so good. And yeah. what made you want to get into it? Um, Just a personal experience that I had made me want to, be, like, go into law. But I'm not going to go into detail about it. Yeah, that's it's not fine. very podcast friendly. <laughs> <laughs> so... <laughs> That's interesting, though, I isn't guess it? Though this is a job that you you have to love this job, right? Surely you have to love this job to do it because it's not an easy job, is it? I mean, no. <laughs> it takes a certain type of person, I think. Um, right, I'm gonna <laughs> I'm gonna ask a really silly question now, <laughs> but I think again, this is what people want to know, right? So when people think of like lawyers, they think of like Ali McBeal and power dressing and yeah. things. Is there a certain shop <laughs> that you think they do good that does good clothes for court? <laughs> 
good lawyer clothes. Where did you go to <laughs> shop? For Sarah, it's definitely Michael Kors. Okay. <laughs> Sarah, let's have you one. Come on Not then. Not so much for court, but one of um, my, uh, the, the barristers that I instruct, who is also uh, someone I can speak to on a personal level, she gave me a tip about a place that was called, is, is called The Fold. Uh, and it's an online place, and the <laughs> clothes for court are beautiful. Oh, the I fold. Really yes. nice. And I must admit, I am very much a person that has to feel the part. Yes, so dress when I'm for the part. Wearing the fold, right? Particularly with the Gucci boots in winter, oh. I oh, feel like I'm halfway towards yes. winning. You've got to psychologically yeah. that is true it's so true that's it why i is. asked the question I'm, I'm glad the fold exists also, well, do you know what the fold sounds, sounds like, like a legal a program yes. doesn't it <laughs> the fold on bbc one <laughs> tonight 9 p.m <laughs> but it's certainly more difficult now to find really nice formal clothes mm. particularly since covid yes, yes. because there's just not the same professional dress. Yeah. And people are working from home. Anymore. Yeah. Yeah. So you used to be able to get tailored suits in any number of places and high streets. Virtually impossible yeah. now. Yeah. Um, talking, I know someone said we don't mention COVID, but I just want to quickly say, when obviously COVID was happening, did you do court via TV? Via yes, Zoom. CVP, right. cloud so video platform. Will you fold from waist upwards and then had your pyjama bottoms on? <laughs> well, actually, <laughs> I can tell you a funny story. I, I would it's never have had, I would have never been able to trust that. So I always had to have just in the case full attire because someone <laughs> in, in this office who will remain nameless, this is what we you like, you guys know of. Um, did do that <laughs> and it was a red hot summer's day it was last year and she got the screen up and realised that um, <laughs> the sun was on the screen so she got up to close the blind in the kitchen wearing shorts oh no with a formal <laughs> top attire oh, and no. didn't realise the court the hearing had started Oh, no. Oh, that is genius, though, <laughs> isn't it? Genius. There was, I'm sure there's been lots of stories oh, like that. Oh, there was yeah, a, yeah, yeah. There was a newsreader once that did it, but there was a mirror in the background, and he just had pants on. Oh. <laughs> the whole time, it, you always get caught out. Yeah. What was the one as well? This is slightly different, but there was the guy who was being interviewed, wasn't there, on the news, and his kid came in oh, in, in the, the walker. walker. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was so oh, funny yeah, as well. I remember that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah, so there's some funny stories from the... Uh, yeah, the lockdown the, days. The, the lockdown days and uh, CVP. C yeah, because it was a completely new world for us when we were in lockdown. Yeah. What CVP? Uh, it, uh, cloud video platform, which oh, is right. the forum the court used to do remote hearings. So um, it, uh, yeah, it, it was a. It kind of brought the legal world into. Mm. Um, uh, the real technology. world, as it were, the world yeah. of technology, uh, because we had to do it. Yeah. Because even now, we are very much paper people a lot of the time, particularly the older yeah. lawyers are. They, it's kind of a comfort blanket, mm. having your paper there that you can thumb through your file because everything now tends to be electronic. But the court systems were very antiquated and now you're into hyperlinking of your court bundles and Ooh, documents, like portals, <laughs> all this kind of thing that would have never happened mm. we're if paper we'd people. not had to do it. Yeah, yeah we're, we're, so, we're for that. we love a bit of pen and paper, don't yeah. we? Our diaries are paper. Like when we're in the studio, we have we pen and paper, down. write things down. Yeah. So we're with you on that. Yeah. Um, yeah. Going back to the courtroom, um, getting like G'd up to go in. Do any yeah. of you have like a song that you listen to before you go in to get you G'd up? No. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> I would have thought you would. I'd have thought you'd be like, right, on goes uh, Rocky or whatever yeah, it is. I was just going to say, if you said to me, what would you put on? It'd yeah. be... Eye of the Tiger. Yeah, yes. okay. Like... Rachel's would be <laughs> Foulet Vu. <laughs> <laughs> what would it be? Ooh. No, so so my karaoke speciality is um, Super Trooper, Abba. Oh, that's a yeah. great one. But I would be worried if I'd <laughs> add that in my head when I was in front of a judge, I might start <laughs> singing it accidentally. <laughs> so <laughs> try not to. 
<laughs> I love it. Uh, that what would yours be? What do you think? Um, I don't actually know. I've not thought about it. I've not been in court enough to know yet. <laughs> no, yeah. Yeah, you'll Spend find a bit out, more time. Yeah, yeah, and then you'll be thinking, right, I need to hear a bit of Beyonce or a bit yes. of this before I go in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Beyonce would be a good shout. Wouldn't it? See, I would think I would have to do it. Like like you were saying about dressing for the part, I, if I'm going into like a meeting or something, I have to have a bit of like music on to get yeah. me in the mood. What would, <laughs> what would you guys, what would you guys have? There's got to be one. There's got to be one you're thinking of. I'm not divulging my musical taste. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> you can probably hear it at five o'clock when I'm driving away. It's, uh, it's but yeah. Cheeky girl. <laughs> <laughs> it's not the cheeky girl, but it's country <laughs> FM or classic country. Okay, no, we're up for that, aren't we? Interesting, yeah. yeah. yeah interesting. Now, uh, no. I thought you were going to put yours on then. No, I'm I not that prepared. I'm afraid now. Going through no. your Spotify then. <laughs> no, I think. Well, yeah. No, it's got to be something, you know, like a bit of Shania Twain, Let's Go Girls, something like that. <laughs> Let's go, girls. Oh, oh completely joking. That, no, he's what? not you joking, guys, is he? I've just had an idea. You guys should have your own Spotify playlist. <gasps> a lawyer so playlist. we've got some ABBA, we've got some Beyonce, we've got some Eye of the Tiger. Yeah. Bit of country. Bit of country. Okay, so I've got another question. <laughs> another silly question. We'll keep them coming. Um... Give us, it's not like an icebreaker, but I want to know, like, what else are you into? So, do you have a hobby? Yeah, away from work, let's, away let's from the courtroom. Yeah, this could be another few episodes. I, I'm afraid oh. I've got absolutely loads of hobbies. Oh, give <laughs> us um, your best right. one, Nat. Give us your best one. I mean, I, I gym all the time. I think probably my most interesting one will be climbing. I, I go to the, we're near the Peaks, Peak District here, so I go bowling outdoors and stuff. And do stuff you like have that. a mattress you carry I do. On your I'm back. one of those weirdos you see out in the peaks, yeah, with those <laughs> big mattresses on my back, yeah. Did you Kerber Edge? I do Kerber yeah. Edge, Burbage all that sort of stuff yeah. we were with a You're climber the other night who was talking about a similar Same thing wasn't he yeah maybe yeah. you know him well we mm. were doing wine tasting with him he's like a wine connoisseur really random so wine tasting and then he went off climbing oh, I, I thought recommend that yeah no, I know but he, he was spitting Indoor. not drinking it yeah, so he was, was soberish yeah. <laughs> wasn't he okay so you're into a bit of climbing yeah climbing golf Golf. That's all sports, rugby, so gym, stuff like that. Yeah. You're an outdoorsy, sporty kind yeah, of Yeah, well, I mean, in the job, we do a lot of like, networking and stuff like that. I mean, the last last week, I did chats with 10K, uh, the running. Well and oh, the week before play. that, I was at a golf day in chats with again, actually. Um, oh. A big networking event over there. So Yeah, great. All right, so you're the sporty one. Okay, let's move on. Hobbies, here we go. Don't know if it's necessarily interesting, but I would <laughs> say at the moment, um, focus is quite a lot on the garden. Trying to get vegetable, oh, fruit. Laura loves her garden. Um, yeah. You're talking my language. Do you, yeah. you said you grow fruit in your garden. So we've got um, a pear tree, an apple tree, uh, black currants, uh, blueberries, strawberries. Oh, self-sufficient. Um, not quite. You eat it a bit too quickly. Um, <laughs> You've got a little uh, little allotment going on there. Yeah. Uh, it's all just in the garden, but uh, yeah, we've got fruit section and then vegetable section. So we've got carrots, uh, green beans, onions, garlic, etc. Can oh, I, nice. uh, you know what I'm going to say? I would recommend chickens. I've got three. They're great. My partner's trying to convince me to get chickens. Get um, chickens. I'm avoiding them at the moment. I, I agree <laughs> with your partner. Get chickens, they're great. They're good company as well. They <laughs> are. <laughs> <laughs> you know, if you've had a hard day, you've been in court, you're like, oh, you could go down and sit with your chickens. Are they noisy? Them. Um, they can be occasionally noisy, but only if they hear your voice and they want to see you. Mine, <laughs> mine call out to me. I love my chickens. Uh, I would highly recommend chickens. And then you'll get eggs. Obviously. There you go. That's the next phase of the of the garden. Let's move on. <laughs> Sarah. Oh, right. I, I feel like Come Sarah's going to have some hobbies similar to <laughs> us, <laughs> namely <laughs> drinking. Yeah, apart, apart from socialising yes. and uh, the, the usual kind of things of wine tasting with Whispering Angel and any uh, other So I love how you're calling it wine tasting, by the way. Tasting, yeah, <laughs> any, any, anything like that. Yeah, yeah. My favourite things. But on the flip side, I'm also into fitness. Good. And this year did my first boot camp. Ooh. Much to everyone's horror here. After week five, people started avoiding me <laughs> because I got a bit obsessed with macros. Right, yes, yeah, okay. So because of the program. Pro yeah. Um, so, yes, by week five, people were dodging me on the stairs. <laughs> <laughs> Is that because you were so, running up and down them? No, that's because I was talking about macros. <laughs> non wanted to run away and avoid me. And they're all now sort of 
in in the next stage of horror because I'm about to start the next boot camp wow. on the 9th of October. But I do find it's a real good stress reliever. Yeah. Oh, yeah, well. exercise is, isn't exercise it? Exercise is, <laughs> but it's the yeah. then wine. It's the, it's the discipline, though, of going at the start of the day for me because... W as the day unfolds, your energies obviously start to mm. get less. What time and do you go in the morning? Any time from 6 a.m. I tend to do 7, uh, but I, I, this morning I did 6.05 spin. Oh, wow. go on. Go on, Sarah. Um, well which I would have never thought 18 months ago, two years ago, I would have had the discipline to do it. Oh, that's amazing. But I actually feel what I get from it more than the kind of, you know, I'm not... I'm, I'm not intending to get to the point where I, I feel like I look like an athlete yeah. or anything, or I've got that kind <laughs> of stamina. It's more about um, the psychological benefits mm -hmm. of doing it and managing work and everything else. Yeah. Really. It's yeah. just a really positive way of... Uh, of of living yeah it's I think a lot of people balance. yeah think that yeah. since Covid especially I think a lot of people say yeah. that don't they yeah, yeah. okay so wine yeah. and exercise perfect Brilliant. let's move on right so I, I'm similar gym five six times a week I've got a private personal trainer right predominantly for managing emotional health really well that's what I initially did it for I've got a little bit obsessed with it I've got to say so I don't like it if I miss my routine um, walking quite a lot, me and my husband on a weekend, 14, 16 miles, will just go for a walk, disappear, leave the teenage kids for five, six hours <laughs> at a time. It's quite nice. Go and have a cake en route. Oh, you've got um, to have a cake en route, haven't you? But again, that came about through COVID, just walking around a lot, and because we used to drive everywhere, and even the local streets, I didn't know many of them until we started yeah. walking around. So, so yeah, that's mainly fitness i've got two teenage children so i'm running them around a lot as well i'm mom's yeah. taxi yeah. <laughs> but my daughter's got a test at the end of november so i'm waiting for payback yeah. <laughs> yes well, that's where you're at now isn't oh, it two teenage daughters yeah well we um we went out for a few drinks didn't we and laura's oldest teenage daughter picked, picked us, us up, up and dropped yeah, us home it has its benefits yeah when they can we were drive, like this sure. is great yeah for sure <laughs> what are your hobbies so I've like just recently moved back here, so I've kind of had to put stuff on hold. Um, but I have a dog who uh, I like to go and see. She's at my parents' house, so I go there quite a bit. Um, before that, I would like go to the gym and have a personal trainer. But again, I've had to stop that because it was back in Macclesfield, so I can't really commute yeah. to and from on a daily basis, which I was doing, but <laughs> it's a bit too much. Yeah. So for the time being, I'm kind of just doing like my little flat stuff and decorating my flat, kind of getting stuff in that I want and things like that. Yeah. So bit of that really you're at, like the start of your kind of well you're at the start of everything aren't you it's like a yeah. new a new start new routine yeah it's exciting yeah. nothing like doing up your first little place yeah. as well is there like you said like getting in what you want putting it where you want to put it that's yeah. amazing did you have chickens because i saw yeah oh, we've got chickens at my parents house do you love your chickens uh they're Ch my mum's <laughs> 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 so, <laughs> well we've had three lots so um originally in lockdown i persuaded my mum to get us some like x battery hens so we did that we kept them alive as for as long as we could. And then obviously like they did eventually die because they yeah. do with the, um, you know, being expatriate hens. Uh, and then we ended up getting some rare breed ones. They then got eaten by a foxes. Fox. Oh. Yep. All of them. Uh, oh, so no. the ones that we have now, we've told my mom, you have to keep them in the chicken coop. Do not <laughs> let them out. And she's like, oh, but I want to. And I'm like, no, <laughs> they're going like to get me. eaten This again. is you, isn't Literally it? Literally me, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, they are really sweet. Like when I, because my parents went away last week. So I was like going home and like feeding them and everything. And they'd all just come running down, like yes. clucking at me. And I was like, oh my God. <laughs> <So> <laughs> See, this is what you could have amongst your carrots and blackberries. <laughs> he doesn't look convinced, does he? He's actually <laughs> shaking his head as we speak. <laughs> oh, guys, it's been really nice to kind of like, get to know you a bit better and I feel like our listeners will enjoy knowing what you do in your spare time rather than just what you do at work and in the courtroom yeah and it's nice to hear about what yeah what, what you do to keep fit and obviously you're all you are all very fit I mean and like I said earlier they're normal people yes. <laughs> I felt like I'd have really offended you Ella. just be like normal people yeah. well, you are normal people <laughs> oh guys it's been lovely thank you so much for having us in here today yeah. Even though we're in a boardroom now, we are quite known for not liking a boardroom. We're yeah. very not corporate. We get a bit intimidated with a big table and lots of people looking at us. Yes. But it's, it's been all right, right today, isn't it? Yeah. Guys, have a nice weekend. Thank you.
you. You're welcome. So this is obviously last episode of season 12. We've got some exciting stuff yeah. coming up, haven't we, next season. So next season starts on Monday. We're not having a break. No. And We're at East Midlands Airport next week. That's all we'll say. We're at the airport and it's going to be fun. <laughs> yes. Also, we did something this week which we're going to reveal on the pod next week which is really exciting as well but yeah bring on season 13